served uh, at one point as general counsel of the FBI. Good to have you with us today. So as, as we look at all of this, one of the things that really stands out to me here is the process, just the nuts and bolts. We know what the federal law is. The IG gets a complaint, deems it credible, deems it urgent. It goes to the DNI. The DNI is then, by federal law, supposed to give it to Congress. Now we're learning, though, that both the White House and the Justice Department have stepped in here and advise that that is not what should happen. Can they override federal law in that manner? Well, they can't override federal law, but what I think probably happened is that the uh, acting director of national intelligence went to either his uh, general counsel and or to the Department of Justice and said, what is the law here? Help me understand what I'm supposed to do. And the Justice Department and his uh, general counsel presumably gave him an answer and they gave him an answer that uh, gives them gives him the assessment their assessment of the law and so look i mean it, the, the, under the constitution and laws of the united states it is possible that uh, that the ig cannot uh, report this particular information that that's possible uh, it sort of depends what it is it depends on the facts and circumstances we don't know that yet but once the the the, the uh, acting uh, director of national intelligence's problem is that once he or somebody in his department went to the Department of Justice, once they tell you what the law is, you have to follow it. You're stuck. And so that's, that's I think, where he is and where the uh, Inspector General is now. They don't have much re recourse uh, at this point in time. So th they, may, they may not have much recourse, but one of the things you said just took, stood out to me, if he goes and he says, hey, I need to know what the law is, and they say, well, the law actually says you have to give this to Congress, but we're telling you you shouldn't do that. I mean, is this just another attempt at, are we going to see something just be tied up once again in the courts? Well, I don't know if it'll end up in the courts. That's probably the, from the Congress, from Congress's perspective, that's probably the worst place for it to end right. up. They need to try to figure out, they need to try to figure out how to use their own authorities under Article One of the Constitution. And quite frankly, they don't seem to be able to really figure that out yet. So that's a separate thing. But the, once right. the Justice Department says their view of the law, then the DNI and everybody else in the executive branch has to fall in line. Honestly, okay. what they're left with, what they're left with at that point is simply to resign. I mean, if they think this is that big of a deal, and look, we don't, we don't know what the facts are again. We know it's serious, given what people are saying about it, but we don't know really what happened. But if they think this is a very significant matter, they should just resign. That's only, that's what they're left with. How unusual is it for the Justice Department, for even the AG, if this is the case, to be involved in something like this? The intelligence community, you know, when I was at the FBI, we went to the to OLC and to other elements of the Department of Justice on a pretty consistent basis because if you've got a, a tough question or a question where there's a lot of risk involved and you want to get another opinion, you want to get a definitive opinion from the Department of Justice, then you go to OLC. Over the years, I had a, I had a great relationship with, with OLC and the various jobs that I had and would seek their counsel uh, as often as I, as I could and, and thought made sense. And so... You know, they, they should be trying to give uh, people in the executive branch their understanding of the best reading of the law and to, to guide them in, 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 with respect to what they're doing. The, the, the reality is, though, is once they say what the law is, you've got to follow that interpretation. You have to follow it. I mean, just looking at all of this, step back for a minute. Is there anything in particular, based on what we know at 210 Eastern time on Thursday, that, that really concerns you? Yeah, it changes quite a bit. What concerns me the most is the long-term implications of this, and I think uh, Chairman Schiff was making a comment about that earlier. This will impact the long-term relationship between the president and the intelligence community because if he thinks that somebody, whoever got this information, is sort of you know ratting him out uh, to the inspector general, then he's going to be more circumspect in what he says to the uh, intelligence community. They may be more circumspect with respect to what they say to him, and that's not good for him. That's not good for the intelligence community. It's not good for the American people, and it's not good for the American people also to lack some amount of trust in like what is going on here, right? The, the American people need to have confidence in what their elected and appointed officials are doing and this does not look good the other thing real quick is this is going to come out eventually right I mean reporters are all over this thing right now and somebody knows enough to be able to explain what it is and so you know it's just going to come out in a messy way and and so this is just not going to this is just not going to end well in my opinion I'm afraid Jim Baker I appreciate the insight as always it also raises questions about what this means for whistleblower protections we're going to tackle that uh, just ahead meantime at any moment Canadian Prime Minister